We have Alicia Surrett, who's the founder and CEO of Pentagoran uh, Capital, and an angel investment vehicle on seed and early stage investment. She's gonna talk a little bit about what are some of the things she sees in content and investing and investing for them. Sure, so first of all, thank you so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. Anytime I've spoken in the classes, I've always been really impressed by how incredibly intelligent the students are, how diverse they are, and um, how driven they are. Uh, so as Sandeep mentioned, I'm an angel investor. I swim in looking at new business proposals every day. I read voraciously, and so I'm constantly thinking about what are the themes out there? What am I investing around? Where am I putting my money to work? And so coming into today, I um, made a list of some of the big themes that really drive me that have been top of mind this year. Hopefully that will be helpful to you. Um, but what I found after I made my notes is that I, I felt like they all really came back to one common theme. And you'll see what I mean as I go through some of the big points. Um, but I think what, what really has driven a lot of my thought throughout the course of this year with the investments I've made is really this concept of the empowered individual. Um, so, so let me start off and, and talk about one of the big themes, and that is a lack of barriers that we see now. It's easier than ever to start a business, as you well know, in terms of costs and um, administrative burdens. And it's, um, it's so incredibly easy now, relative to the way it used to be, to you know, start a YouTube channel or to blog or to self-publish. And so that's something I constantly think about, empowering individuals to have a voice in a way that they never really did before. Um, and also, you see a, another big theme of unbundling, right? And so it's not just individuals having a voice and speaking their minds, but also being able to receive information from who you want when you want it, right? Instead of saying, oh, I have to go through this big gatekeeper you know, to um, you know, subscribe to this magazine if I want to hear the voices of these particular individuals. Like, no, I can just go to Twitter and subscribe to 100 journalists that I find fascinating. And, and I can get that information directly from them in a way that I never did before, or, or subscribe to certain documentaries, or um, download content from, from a Netflix. Um, another big theme, of course, that we, we all are, are seeing all the time is mobile and social, right? And I think that this also comes back to the, the theory of the empowered individual, because you have content that's available you know, on the go, all the time. We're constantly consuming information from people that we're following. We're constantly putting out information every bit, bit of the day that, that we feel like we want to. Um, and, and we're also driven so much more today by the concept of getting information from influencers like, like we haven't been in the past, right? So gone are the days of you know, these big companies being able to like, influence mass markets by putting out huge amounts of marketing spend. Now it's, it's really proven that you're making purchase decisions by what your friends are recommending to you more than ever, right? And so you're getting that kind of information again from other individuals, you're subscribing to them, and you're really putting a lot of weight in, um, in what people are telling you, what they trust, and those are your trusted advisors. Another huge theme I think about all the time is big data, um, which you, of course, talked a bit about, and um, really the theory of the democratization of information, right? The, the information that we have at our fingertips now and how that also empowers individuals to make a difference is just absolutely fascinating to me. I read an article about um, how there was an issue with uh, restaurants dumping oil and you know how do you figure out who's doing who's doing it and how do you find them and because of the big data that governments are now making available to us um, basically what they did was find out where the sewers were being clogged and then they could back into the information of which restaurants were dumping the oil when they shouldn't have been and just the massive amounts of information that's coming on that that's coming online now um, is just really incredible I recently made an investment in a company called Enernol which is um, the first real-time energy policy data company uh, out there. And it's just incredible to think about the information they're now making available to people that are making trillions of dollars worth of, of information decisions in the, in the energy space. Um, also, the, and this kind of piggybacks right on the, the idea of this big data being available, is um, transparency is just at a level that we have never seen before. And I think about this every day. I mean, we all have our cameras at our fingertips. You know, people are documenting, documenting major social injustices, um, you know, whether it's, uh, and, and people are reporting, again, coming back to this empowered individual, people have voices like, you know, you, you haven't seen in the past and we're able to consume information from people that, you know, with, without these barriers that we've seen in the past and so the reporting that you see on things like you know, genital mutation or 
um, you know, uh, uh, rape kits not being tested. I mean, it's just incredible when I think about the kind of transparency that exists now in the world. And with transparency uh, also lends into my final theme is um, accountability. So, so now, it, you know, it's, it's incredible to me when I, when I read the news about, you know, domestic abuse cases and, and the implications for the NFL or um, what's going on at UVA with the rape cases and comments made at, you know, an, an Uber dinner to journalists and the implications of that or what the Microsoft CEO says in passing about, you know, trusting karma to get you ahead. I mean, it's just, it's really incredible. So I think, again, you know, when, when I think about what's going on in the world, a lot of it really comes back to this concept of the empowered individuals, like the information that we have at our fingertips now, the transparency that we have to make decisions, the amount of data that we have to make decisions. Um, and, and it certainly, you know, it comes back to one of these big mantras that I think about constantly in my life and also with, with respect to my investments, and that is your dollars and your actions are your votes, right? I mean, we were able to trace so much about what individuals do now with respect to, you know, what we read, what we click on, how much time we spend on websites, what our purchases are, and all of these things become reflections of who we are as individuals and also for entrepreneurs being able to look at that data as our consumer base and be able to, to take information and make smart decisions on that. Um, and with all of these themes, I think, come opportunities. So um, I think because you have all these empowered uh, individuals putting out information, we're consuming so much information, I think we as a public, and I personally feel like I'm constantly swimming in content, right? It's just, it's amazing how much is out there. And so for the organizations that are able to curate that for individuals, there's just tremendous opportunity. Um, and uh, so I, I think that, that that creates a lot of uh, efficiency and also the ability to discover things that you never would have and, and, and do that in a very condensed way. Also, because so many individuals have such specific um, profiles out there now and, and we're seeing them in amounts that we never really did before, there's massive opportunities in customizing products for people because you know so much more about predilections and, and um, preferences. Um, and people are consuming things in completely different ways. I mean, you look at like the, the phenomenon of cereal as a podcast and, and, uh, and the success there. Um, and then finally, because again, all of this information is out there, there's just incredible opportunities when it comes to crowdsourcing. And so I'm, I'm constantly interested in the way that businesses are crowdsourcing information um, and also crowdfunding um, to be able to, um, to, to build their products and be successful. I invested in a company earlier this year called Nomad, um, which raised over a million dollars through crowdfunding platforms. It was quite incredible. But more importantly, they used that as an opportunity to direct, directly interact with their consumers and get market feedback and then constantly iterate on their product. And, and companies have just not been able to do this in the past like, like a company can be empowered to do, to, to do today. Um, so anyway, it all comes back to this idea of the empowered individual, and I constantly think about the entrepreneurs that I invest in, um, how they're, they're, uh, they're making use of the transparency available to us, how they're building on those themes. I invested in a food company also earlier this year that um, really markets itself on having full transparency in the supply chain, which I think people care about. People care about what they're putting in their bodies and being able to say, you know, from start to finish, these are all the ingredients and this is where they come from. Um, so anyway, for me, I, I constantly think about the empowered individual and how our dollars and our actions are, are our votes. Great, thank you.